Welcome back, Brian Schwager here. Your fit tip is focusing on the latissimus muscles and when they're short and tight. So we're going to start out by doing a comparative range of motion test on this client here. And you'll notice the difference between the right arm and the left arm as he brings it up. So there's our range of motion and differences. So one muscle is short and tight, the other is long and weak. And now we start with some myofascial release using the foam roller. I will stress caution, sometimes I do refer out. Now fascia is important to release because it is a thin layer that lies over the muscle and when it gets constricted, it will also constrict the muscle itself. So if a muscle has a knot in it, meaning that there's a knot in the fascia, it will shorten the muscle. If you take the knot out, then the muscle can get elongated easier. So in this demonstration, what I'm actually having my client do is I'm having him relax the left arm and gently roll across that upper latissimus. You know, I don't have to lift my hips. I can just drag them across the floor. It all depends on the client and the amount of pressure they can take on that roll. Let's listen in as I explain this to this client. It's not that much distance. Could be an inch, could be an inch and a half. But what I want to stay away from is down here to the floating ribs. If I want to get to the belly of my lat, that's a little bit lower. That's cool. And that's probably as far as I can go before I start running into my armpit. My arm is relaxed so that the muscle that I'm rolling isn't tight or tense. I'm not trying to stretch it. So here I'd be stretching the lat. I don't want to do that. So we only want to roll the side that is short and tight, obviously. We don't want to roll the one that's long and weak. So we're going to stick to one side as we correct the pattern. Now this is the active stretch called the quadruped reach and roll. And for this particular client, I'll be explaining how to focus more on her right side as opposed to her left. Don't worry, if you can't sit back, don't, don't worry about that. This hand, the one that's not moving, is the one that's stable. So it doesn't move. Well, I shouldn't say that. You'll see this in a second. As I inhale, I reach out, and I'm looking in the opposite direction, aren't I? Yes. So actually, look at my right shoulder. What's it doing? It's going down as my left shoulder's going up. Right. So this is the tempo, inhale. And it's vitally important that we do the inhale and the exhale in the right order. And I'm letting the shoulders glide. So this shoulder's going up. This shoulder's going down, and there's a little rotation in my spine there, isn't there? Yeah. And that little bit of rotation is great for increasing the mobility of the spinal column between the shoulder blades. Now we have to shift. We have to open up that hip. So I could shift my legs over a little bit. Now the reason I did that is that particular client had some tightness to the muscles above that hip on the right side. Shoulders going down as the right shoulder is going up. 